Hello, hi, hi, hi. Sorry, I should probably say something instead of just standing here in, be in bewilderment. There's your game. It's gonna take me a hot minute to wake up. I just snapped out of a nap about 20 minutes ago. But I will be functional in due time. posture straight <sighs> three two one go alternate bringing your knees up to touch the ring con this stretch targets the area between the thighs and glutes last time yes just like Ooh, that tell us might be a bit of a rough Next session my right knee is giving stretch. me problems bring the insides of your ankles up toward the ring con Breathe out as you raise your ankles. Last time. All right. Good. Next is the back straightening stretch. Take a big step forward and drop your hips. Don't let your knees move too far forward. Make sure your toes are pointed straight ahead of you. Let's do one more of each. Yes, looking great. Finally, spread your feet. Raise the ring con above your head and lean to the side. Be sure to keep your lower back straight. As you exhale, begin <sighs> to lean. Okay. Let's do one more of each. Doing this stretching is waking me up a bit. Great job. <sighs> sure, you're rooting for me. Rooting, tooting, shooting, dooting. Okay, don't ask. I'm not even sure what I'm doing. Water.
good one out there. Yeah, I just sizing. Oh, good. I see it's already being stupid. You introduced yourself as a intimidating man of rather large size. You thought nothing bad of it, and you thought nothing bad of it, eh? I'm a little, I'm a little mentally foggy right now. I just woke up from a nap, so I'm a little, I'm a little not here at the moment. But I'll probably snap to in a, in a little while. So forgive me if I respond rather flat. Okay, the yellow matter ray did not also do it. Good. Now I woke up. I got worked late. I worked quote unquote late into the night last night. And oh man, no, I just let naps happen whenever they do happen. <laughs> but like. I don't know. Okay. I'm kind of getting move. back into terrible sleep patterns because of the fact that I don't really go anywhere or do much of anything with my days. Because, I mean, what is it? I was... I think... I slept a full eight hours the night prior. Two nights ago, and it's a bad way to put this. But then I also took a nap halfway through the day yesterday for about three hours. And then because I was working on something, you know, I was all fired up until 3.30 in the morning, compounded with the nap I took. But even so, I still woke up at like 9.30, 10 in the morning. And like I said on Twitter, which is down there below the stream thing. You can see my exact wording, but I had set everything up to start streaming. Like OBS was open, game was in the Switch. I was just basically, you know, I was one one step away from putting on the uh, putting on the vest to keep on underneath this. To get ready to do this ring fit stream start off, it's transitioning to Age of Calamity afterwards. And then my brain was like, hey, what about that nap thing? We like that nap thing. And I went, no, can't do a nap. Today is the stream day, maybe tomorrow. And then brain went, ah, but what if? 
Unfortunately, my brain is a very persuasive son of a gun and can get me to do just about anything at once. I don't remember if it was, I don't know if it was you or somebody else I know that said it, but, or somebody else in chat, but like, there is a way to like, there's a way that people do stay awake for unprecedentedly long periods of time, but how they do it is like, it's like every four, every, for every hour they're awake, they're only awake for 40 minutes of it. Excuse me. They're awake for only 40 minutes of it. And then the other 20, they take a nap. I think it has something to do with pilots. Like, I want to I want to say the, the, the demographic in question that does that is a pilot, but I could be wrong. But... Doing that, it allows them to stay up. It basically, it effectively allows them to stay awake for 24 hours and not have the negative repercussions of not getting enough sleep, nor having the negative repercussions of taking a nap that leaves you drowsy for an hour or so. Anyway, pendulum bedtime. Okay, let's go. Healer. Very nice. Perfect. Fantastic. And the other one's probably not nice. too far behind. Oh, is it over? Okay. Yeah, like, um, what was it? Well, like I said, you know, for every hour you're awake, during that hour you take like a 10 or like a 20, 15 minute nap. Or no, it's less. It's, um, it's an eight minute nap. Like I said, it's mainly pilots that will do that, if I recall correctly. But no, I think, like I did this, like I had this issue a while ago when I first moved out, because I didn't have anybody's, um, because my only schedule that I had to follow was the one I set. I was just like, oh, well, 
finally one that suffers from me not doing anything for a couple hours. I'm gonna start taking naps more. And that also bled into when I streamed back at the last place I lived in. And also my work schedule and work ethic when I was back there. Because I would wake up, you know, Basically how it work is, I get home from work about 4 o'clock, you know, tired as all hell, and I would take a nap. I'd wake up about 6, 6.30 after that, make dinner, turn around, stream until 10 o'clock, 10.30 at night, and then go to bed at like 11, 11.30 in the uh, at night to get up at 6 in the morning. Go to work. Not terrible, but it's also a very healthy lifestyle. Far uh, be subscribed. Oh God, how many is that? 35, 36? No. Yes. Actually, yes, 36. Good job. Amazing. All right. The big three euro. Because I'm pretty sure March is when I got affiliate. God, it's this one. Okay, hold on. I have to look at this. How have we not killed each other yet, you ask? A wonder of modern medicine. Drop keyboard. Hey, you can you can tell me what you you were what what happened. That's fine. I thought you were just ha really excited for. Far subscribing for three years straight. Three years. Far, how have we not killed each other or beamed each other into non existence? But anyway, so, yeah, we, like, so by all, so by all accounts, you know, I was getting eight hours of sleep a night when I was doing that pretty much daily of taking a nap immediately after work, and then only getting five hours, five, or, yeah, six to five hours sleep a night after I got done streaming. Or working on videos. And I don't understand how I function. But that that uh, trend is coming back up for me and I don't think I like it. I'm forcing myself to sleep in, in one way or another. It could be like that before I got diagnosed with sleep apnea. Where I would go to bed and be in my bed for six to eight hours, but because I would be choking in my sleep or not get enough proper, uh, not get enough air into my lungs properly, my body would keep waking up and keep me out of REM sleep 
which is the kind of sleep you need. REM, rapid eye movement. So research it if you're not sure what that is. But yeah, just... I would basically get about the equivalent of like two hours of sleep, even though I'd be in bed trying to sleep for six to eight hours. I will take a nap and a truncated sleep over what that was. Now that I've experienced proper sleep. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I would never hit it. Because I know I've told the story before, so I'll try and keep it short. But how sleep, what's sleep paralysis, or not sleep paralysis, that's something everybody experiences at one point in their life or some, or another. Um, sleep apnea, how, basically, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to finish out this set before I finish that thought. Anyway, so, sleep apnea, picture, picture your esophagus like a roadway. Picture your esophagus like a roadway, and, you know, from the, and from like, um, for 14 hours out of the day, there's a person who is standing there at a crank, turning a crank. To power the, to power like, to power a roof to the bridge, for the duration that the, that the uh, that the that they're that that person is turning a crank, that keeps the bridge roof stable and upright. But the secondary function of doing that is to charge, charge an autonomous function of that roof, uh, that roof opening ca uh, capability, for up to eight hours. Now, imagine, now for sleep apnea, imagine that autonomous function never existed. Or if it did exist, it's faulty and it doesn't work. That's what sleep apnea is. Basically, something has caused your soft, the muscles in your esophagus to not be able to stay open when you're asleep. So it collapses in on your esophagus effectively. You know, what I'm trying to do is closing your windpipe. And because the body naturally just doesn't think much when you're in that sleeping state, or when you get to that sleeping state, you know, your, your windpipe's closed and it won't reopen until your heart or your lungs go, hey, there's no oxygen in here, problem, problem, and then it kicks your body awake just enough to open your airways to have everything come back in again. Thus, you never hit REM sleep. My lungs have tried to kill me so much throughout my life. It's, it's, a, it's a miracle I'm alive. Okay, let's move. Target your ass with this. Great! Wonderful! Good job! Perfect! Fine work! That's pretty much what it is, Kasai, right there. You kind of described it 
perfectly, except that's for me almost every night. What are we doing? Hell of a rush, okay. Uh, excuse me. I had some soup right before the stream here, so my body's working out the guests. Hello, Degrox. Um, but yeah. So what'd you describe there, Kasai? It's basically like someone like me with sleep apnea deals with on a near nightly basis if we don't have a machine to keep our airway open. I mean, it's mildly graphic here, but not too, that's nothing terrible. There were so many times before I got properly diagnosed with sleep apnea and got used to using my machine, where I would be, I would wake up from a dead sleep, bug-eyed because I couldn't breathe, rolling over to my, on my stomach, and propping myself up in my arms. Basically doing fish on land of trying to get my esophagus, esophagus to open back up. And when it did, it usually sounded like <laughs> and, I'd be, and I would be stuck paralyzed in that position trying to get air. I'd be stuck in that position trying to get air into my lungs for about a good 15, 20 minutes before I finally was calm enough to fall back asleep. I do want to say I think my recent bout with I think my recent bout with constant naps that I've been having and not sleeping fully through the night is a little bit because of my current lifestyle where I don't have any obligations I can have to go to at least not for another like three or four weeks. I heard that warning for a change. But, yeah, I think mine was that 
I think my issue right now. Oh yeah. There's a host alert. With Tenchi. <sighs> Drag out the real one. Anyway, I think the issue that I think is mine coming up here, because this only started like a week ago, that I was uh, I was having bouts of constant naps that I've been, I've been needing to take. Um, continue. But yeah, like this constant bout of me needing a nap, I think it's coming up because allergy season has started and even though I am taking my allergy pills to help with that my body's still thinking oh it's a cold it's a cold brewing you need a nap to help combat it well, that's what I try and do too what I started to do now kind of alternating is if I'm playing a game <clears throat> excuse me like when I end the streams for the night, I go host somebody, obviously. Now, I tend to favor somebody who's playing something that is related to the last game I was playing before I finished streaming for the night. So, this is not happening tonight, by the way. I'm getting an example. So, like, if I'm streaming Ring Fit here, I'll alternate between hosting a friend that I'm hosting among my friends or hosting somebody who's also playing Ring Fit. I alternate between those two. Tonight's example might be, you know, uh, tonight's example would probably be something like if we get done with Age of Calamity, if we get, if I get done wanting to play Age of Calamity, or if we beat Age of Calamity and decide to call us the stream then, I'll either, tonight I'll either go, go host a friend, or I'll go raid somebody who is also playing Age of Calamity, or cons considering Age of Calamity is a pre-sequel, split timeline sequel to Breath of the Wild, I may go host somebody who's playing Breath of the Wild for their first time. Ah. You don't have any new things. I know this. Sit time. Let's look through what you got here. I mean, I only recently started doing that too, Kasai, so what I'm doing is not a new a new wave or the new trend. You know, it's not the new age. Welcome to the new age, to the new age. Fine, you can tell me that. Don't bring up that warning then if I'm in a shop where I can't see the world map. Anyway. So, I mean, take what I'm going to say and don't take it as me being mean to you. Because somebody can say the same thing to me, but they know, but I know they mean well because, just because of how, what, uh, what, how fortunate that me and them have gotten alternatively. Because I tend to stream, I don't know what your viewer base Kasai is. But I, t I feel like I tend to stream for a larger view base, comparatively. So I've only just started recently trying to raid people who are in my same category. Just because, you know, share the love, pass it along, pay it forward, that kind of thing. For someone, I would say someone like you who potentially, I could be wrong, potentially has a sl uh, smaller uh, viewer base than I do. Pass it along to, you know, pass along to friends that you... The friends that you follow or those that you follow already but again don't take everything that I say as testament and and okay I have five don't take what I say as the right way to do it because if my way to do it was the right way if well we both know where that would go I would not be 
I would not be a struggling content creator. <laughs> Come on, let's Oop, wait, I almost forgot. I like how I went to check how many of these I had and then I forgot to pump it up. There, now I feel better. But I, I won't tell you that that is the absolute best way you need to do something. Do, do what feels right by you. I can offer suggestions, but I can't force your hand to do everything exactly as I say. And again, I mean no ill will by how I phrase that. I'm using assumptions and the fact that you don't have direct contact with uh, who does what in terms of creation. Hit the pinwheel with an air. Like, in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things, you know, me doing this, like, I know, I know for a fact that me doing these ring fit streams, uh, excuse me, me doing these ring fit streams isn't exactly the creme de la creme of content creation. Well aware of that. Why do I do it? Because... Because I feel like it's a kind of a stepping stone for some people that I would like to see get into getting fit like I have. But also, kind of a, um, oh wait, onions, hold on. You might have something big here. Oh. Uh, yeah, like. Oh yeah, I stream Ring Fit, and I do it because it's kind of become a thing for me. It's kind of become my niche. I know for a fact that me streaming, streaming Ring Fit is not the most entertaining thing. Oh good, the Ring Cons decided to act up again. Um, yeah. Like I said, you know, Ring Fit's kind of become my thing here. At least on my Twitch channel. I'm probably known... I'm probably known for playing too many Musou games. And alternatively, playing Ring Fit. That's what I'm known for probably on Twitch the most. If I wanted to go chase okay, that, go. if I wanted to go ta chase those Twitch dollars, okay. you know what I could do? I could go run out, buy a PlayStation 4, start playing Call of Duty, or, God, what was the most recent? Or start playing a game like Control, or just say hell with it and start playing games like League of Legends and Dota and Counter Strike, or constantly stream Smash Brothers. You know, I could chase, I could chase that dollar. I could, I could run the hustle, but I don't because I'm those games. I don't, I like them, but I don't like them in the capacity that other people do. I should say, I should double back, I should back up to myself where, yes, my claim to fame on Twitch is probably these Ring Fit streams right now, and playing various Muso fighters. In fact, there is a high chance that once we're done with Age of Calamity, then I'm going to end up, that I'm going to end up getting uh, Persona, 5, Persona 5 Strikers, and pl start playing through that. Okay. Oh, 
and it's a very high possibility considering the tax return has come in and I've not blown my tax return on anything. Great move. But the other thing I think I'm known for also on Twitch here is at the drop of a hat, most scenarios, at the drop of a hat, I will stop whatever I'm playing, boot up Sonic R, do a speed run in Sonic R, and then go right back to what I was playing. So I've got three things on lockdown, baby. Help. <laughs> Uh, if your thing there's if your thing right there is play Sonic R, not until after this is done. <laughs> okay, you'll have to remind me. Yeah, you did it twice, unfortunately. So, I would like to have something alongside where I can put a mental note on something. Here. Let's do it like this and I can disable this right afterwards. Um, give me just a minute here. What is this font called that I'm using? That one. There, now it's on screen. I don't know if I can refund general channel points. That's something that's like a Twitch thing, and I don't think I have any thing over. Oh, hold on, let me see. Oh. No, I can't. Hold on, let me look into this. Okay, so I now have seen something here for the first time. Let me just let me just clear my request queue. No bot, I don't want your BS. I go through all this, this also gives me a minute to recuperate. Okay. Ah, that's how it is. Okay. There you go. You show your points back now. I understand how that works now. It's actually pretty awesome. So yeah, you should have the, unless you want unless you want to re redo it again for whatever reason, you have the points back in your system. Alright. 
I should I should really fine tune those make me do something points to be something a little more specific, to be honest. <sighs> Being groggy. Energy, all time crisis slow. But still, I did about, I did about 30, 44 of those left stopping. Yeah, well, whew. the uh, Keep squeezing. like I do have a couple friends okay. who are mods, but I also like to take care of those. I understand that they're not around at all times, so I will take care of those bots myself if they're not around. And this isn't, whew, excuse me. Now, and this isn't me calling out my friends who have made mods at all. This is to be saying how I do things. I just tend to handle things on my own accord as much as I can. You know, loner mentality. Could do. Great. Well, I haven't had too much. Well, yeah, they do actually. Let's say they don't have too much of an issue, and then I remember. Oh yeah, I played Sonic 3D Blast on stream randomly one night, and it really hated that I was doing that. Um. Catch my breath here from doing mountain climbers. But that's just how I am with most things I do where like mental mentality wise, I just try and take care of as much as physically possible without bothering anybody else. So I don't like to force things on other people that I know I can handle myself. You feel me? I feel me. I hope I can feel me, because that means because if I can't, that means my nerves are, are shot and dead. Oh, this is a chest, oops. But yeah. Hopefully those points went back in your system. Another bot incoming, by the way. Unless I'm horribly wrong, there's probably another bot incoming. <laughs> you did it. Just me, I notice things every now and again. Sometimes I'm a telemobulgent. <sighs> 
but um, that's a topic of conversation that I'm trying. I would like to save for when I record my 12 year anniversary video, which I'm probably gonna take the time to do tonight after stream, whenever that happens. Um, but something that I should mention, especially with you, the comment we had earlier about sending people to other streams who are within your same game category. Do what you want to do, but a lesson I learned early on in the content creation field is don't chase clout. Don't try and kiss up to somebody just because they have bigger numbers than you or the biggest numbers. Make friends with who you make friends with whoever will let you in and cherish those friendships as long as they cherish it as well. Now, some people may say, well, it's easy for you to say, okay, warning, warning, Scooter's gonna name drop, warning, warning. That's easy for you to say, Scooter. You you know Yoshi Hiller and Charles C. Bernardo and Marilyn. That's easy for you to say and not chase clout, because you know people with clout. Yes. But that's because I happen to be friends with them before they blew up. Oh, almost missed that. Drop your hips. Like, Lightly cover the IR motion with the pad of your right I will say, the like, the roadmap I'm going to give you for this is, Please do not move um, long time ago, when Let's Playing was still in its heyday, I made friends with a guy called We Master 08 is Back. I believe that's his old, his old screen name. Pretty sure that's his old screen name. Um, he now goes by Ultiki, Ultikai, Ultiki, something like that. And what I went from there is, I made friends with him, I worked on him with some stuff, and then he introduced me to some of his friends. Um, gosh, he just has so many names at this point, so I'm going to forget him, but... I'm just gonna say Ashley and Adam. If you're out there, you know who you are. Hi, how's it going? He introduced me to Ashley and Adam, who Ashley is a frequent subscriber to the, the, this Twitch channel. And in turn, Ashley introduced me to Fiakiti, Lucky70X, and, and subsequently Tamal9. And then through Lucky and Tamal, I met Gaia, or sorry, because of Kitty, I also met Slim Kirby. And because of my connection with Gaia and Slim, I met the rest of the Puddle Plains crew. Odin Spack, Tennis Bubba, Wolf Shikai, Wolf of Storms, who I think is Wolf Kusanagi right now. Oh god, I can't remember his name. And Fight Kitty also introduced me to Safazen. Safazen introduced me to Charles, when he st when he was still like at ten thousand subscribers, Yo Schiller when he was at like twenty, uh, Maryland when he when he started having this renaissance of doing wedlocks and nuzlocks constantly, you know, and everything just kind of snowballed from there. The point of what I'm trying to say when I say all this is. is don't go around purely chasing clout. If you're purely chasing clout, you're gonna make fake friends and those friendships are gonna fall away and you're gonna have the situations that land you on drama alert. Okay, let's move. Keep your back. Instead, form lasting friendships with people that regardless of if they make it big or not, just Fantastic. stay friends with them. All right. And I know that me, myself, I'm... Yes. 
me myself, I know I, I'm well aware that I'm not I'm not easy to be friends with. Not because I'm a dick or anything, even though most of my speech patterns come off as not me being a dick, I'm well aware. But it's not easy with for, be a friend with me, I know, because I don't have very many social graces. I'm blunt, I will never sugarcoat things. And I have this lovely anti-social streak in my brain that says, where my brain goes, hey, you know that social thing? Let's, what's not today? Or this week? Prefer pre preferentially this month if possible. So, to any of the homies out there that kind of stay friends with me, regardless of my known social shortcomings, thanks. You guys are kind of the real ones that keep me grounded and keep me from being a miserable man. I'm spilling my heart out today, apparently. Whatever. of people online you know most of most people online not everybody I'm not looping anybody everybody in this but a lot of people online have this do have kind of the same social issue streak that me and others have where we can be social and interactable but occasionally our brain just says can we don't I have tried, uh, I've tried explaining that to, I've tried explaining it to more of my local friends who are more, oh, that's X something. There's a term, I'm, I'm trying to think of the fancy word for it, basically, there are people who are much better at being social, who don't understand when I say, when I try and tell them, hey, uh, I can't, I'm, I can't right now, I can't today. My okay. brain says no, no, no. So I would love to be hanging out with you, but right now I'm, being, I'm having a social bad day and if I go out and do a thing, who knows what sure. dumb thing I'm gonna say or do. So can I just skip today? Excellent. Keep it up. Well, that's the thing, kind of, kind of half my social inability comes from how much I play video games. Like, if there's, if there's some video stimulation, my brain gets distracted just enough where I can make conversation. But, say for example, say for example, you know, I was doing a just chatting stream, but all of this in front of me right here, this double monitor set up with the, everything here, was just gone and I was literally just sitting here in this chair facing a blank wall and a light on a webcam I'd be silent Great. <laughs> Wonderful. God, that, game, that game is still there by the way right. I have not Thank taken a uh, sing party or its subsequent USB mics out of their cases. Perfect. I've had those for like six, seven years now. They have stayed in that box. Hold on, getting lightheaded. Sorry, just making sure my headphones haven't turned off. I've been yammering so much that I couldn't tell if this, if my uh. Headphones and turned off or not, which is my only way to hear things.
<sighs> okay. So yeah, I figured I would say that like, like I said, I'm blunt and I'm honest, but I'm, I'm bluntly honest to a fault about myself as well. And I know that's something you don't want to do, especially with people that are strangers, but whatever. That's just how I am. I mean, I do, I'm aware I kind of go through this trend where I kind of go from like to, to extrapolate on it more. I go through this period where for three weeks out of the month, I'm fine. I can make conversation. I can converse. No problem. Pause this just so the game doesn't yell at me. But for that remaining, for, for those remaining days out of the month, and they can be sprinkled anywhere within the month, my brain just goes, no. And tell, and cuts off all social capabilities for me. Exactly that. That's kind of how I got pigeonholed too, Kasai. So we're in the same boat. Pigeonholed into, into, well, it's like, well, what do you like? What do you talk about? You start talking about stuff you're interested in me. For example, video games, content creation, with a light side of learning other languages. And people just go, no, 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 not that, not that. What else are you into? Well, you got me cornered because I got nothing else to talk about now. And I think part of it is, uh, another thing of it is, you know, I am okay with talking about politics, you know, in more one-on-one, -on -one, intimate, not broadcast on the internet stuff. This is especially the case just because I've gotten older, and that's kind of something you talk about more when you get older. For to you guys, I don't bring up politics. I don't bring up politics to you guys, because nobody wants to hear that stuff constantly. People want to escape from that stuff. Uh, yeah, Kasai, like, not as much as I, not as much as I, like, um, not as much as I enjoy things, things that with content creation and video games, for obvious reasons, but, you know, it intrigues me to, to at least have, know how other languages work so I can start, like, try and, like, bridge the gap to speak them, or at least bridge the gap enough where I can try and communicate with somebody who doesn't speak my language natively. Because I very much, I very much, I very much have the mentality that English, American English, or European English, either or, is not an easy language to understand or speak. Anybody who does that, god damn it, you are a freaking hero for learning how to speak quite possibly the most difficult language on this planet. Fixing my mat so I can do mountain climbers. So I try and pick up on things with other languages so I can bridge the gap more, try and speak different languages, and maybe make connections outside of just English speaking people. 
Like, I would love to sit in a room for a day with people who speak nothing but Spanish to try and pick apart Spanish more so I can speak it more fluently. Because, I mean, for me to speak Spanish right now, I have to stop and think for a minute. And then hablas al español, no, no en todo más, porque no sé mucho español. Example given to you. Which is why currently right now I'm picking up on like, thanks to Schiller's talking with you, Schiller, you know, I'm picking up on little things when it comes to Japanese as well. Not enough to make a sense any more, any more than, you know, single phrases. But I do try and pick up on that stuff to try and bridge gaps in language. Like, just from an outsider looking in, and if anybody out there happens to stumble across things, stumble across this stream and go, oh, interesting, he, he knows, he knows other languages, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on what I'm about to say, but I feel like in the worldview sense, the hardest languages to learn are, like in order, are English, Japanese, or no, sorry, English, Chinese, Russian, Japanese, and then probably, I would say either Norse or German after that. Spanish is pretty easy, because at least for the most part, it uses the same Roman languages or Roman, same Roman letters that American uses, but some some words you flip around the language because of how it's structured. Like how I said earlier, no se no se mucho or I guess we no se más español. In English, we in English it translates to I do not know a lot of Spanish. But I think like for most languages, like I think I got a grasp on it enough to say, I don't know, or could you say it in English? Like for most languages, I have at least that phrase down, so I don't get, so people understand that I'm lost when they're speaking their native tongue. 
I mean, the simple phrase, Akari wa se, boils down to, I'm not too sure, I don't know. <laughs> Now, to go back to that, why do I say, as an outsider who doesn't know anything about the language, why do I say learning Chinese is probably okay. one of the hardest languages to learn? Perfect. For one, it has two different dialects that are, that are both commonly accepted, that have different rules to them. Kind of akin to American and European English. But for the most part, from what I know, with Chinese Fantastic. is that a lot of the a lot of a lot of how their words work is how long you hold out the sound of a of a of a letter. Fantastic. And I'm gonna sound incredibly Keep incredibly down. tone deaf and incredibly well um I can't think of another word. The word that basically means, uh, it's basically like, uh, effectively, racism, I guess. I'm not trying to be that. It's just how the language sounds to me. If anyone wants to correct me, please do. I try to be as, I try to be as well-meaning and as politically correct as possible when I say so. But for, for, for language like Chinese, you know, Something like that. I could have either said something like, "Ah, yes, your daughter is, your daughter is very pretty," or I could have said, "Your daughter is a doll." Just because of how long you hold out specific vowels and other letters in the language dictates what words you're meaning. Let's see, try. Excuse me. I've got a friend. Um, he's probably not here right now. He's probably, he might be practicing for his stack game marathon entry. But something to put on the table for that that I will raise is like, I know a friend. I have no friend who has studied enough German that he can, he like his German, is equivalent to my Spanish, where I cannot speak full sentences and carry on a conversation in that language. But we can know enough of the language to say, I would like to have this food, this dish on the menu, or I would like to know where this hotel is, or can you tell me where the nearest restroom is, or where is the nearest telephone. Like, he knows enough German to survive if stuck in Germany for a couple days. Much like I know enough Spanish that I'll survive in, in Mexico for a couple days. That's what I was looking for. Insensitive. I don't try and be insensitive. I sometimes come across as insensitive because I just blurt things. But I try not to be insensitive. Wait, hold on.
So yes, I want to reiterate at that, reiterate that point. That terribly broken Chinese I spoke any, at all a minute ago, I have no knowledge of the Chinese language. If I said something terrible, tell me, please. Because I have no idea what I'm saying. I'm just trying to give examples from what I've seen. Oh, we're done. That'll keep you going. Bluntness, being blunt is a double-edged sword. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword because in my example that I've given multiple times tonight, I will say what's on my mind. Yes. But because I don't think things through constantly when I say it because I'm being blunt, I could say something endearing or I could say something that could end a friendship. Okay, let's go. Which leads me no mansplaining myself Get constantly. Very nice. Keep it up. I mean, I'll use, the phrase, I'll use that phrase because I know I do. Like, if I catch myself that I'm about to go off on a tangent over explaining something, I will say, especially if it's to a female colleague, I will say, like, if I say, hey, I'm about to, I'm about to go off and over explain, or if it is to a female colleague, I say, I'm about to mansplain, you are well within your rights to tell me to shut up any, at any point, and I will. Because I am blunt and also oblivious. <laughs> it's a winning combination. Which is why I tend to speak so much, because I know I'm going to say the wrong thing a lot. It's a gift because you will say your mind. It's a curse because you will say your mind without thinking. One dang it. Anyway, so let's 
Let's attempt to suddenly change just a tiny bit here. We'll pro I'll probably double back myself because it's just how I am. I double back from the things I say. So. Okay. Let's let this go. I know the last stream when I did Ring Fit, I was saying, hey, I got off my butt and I got work done for a change instead of working for 10, 12, 15 hours in the week and then calling it quits then. Well, I have finished that extracurricular work that I set out to do. It's done, it's recorded, I just have to edit it down now. But I did that extra work I set out for myself. I'm getting my workflow back. Unfortunately, because of limited hard drive space, I have to stop that workflow now. <laughs> because if I record much more than I currently have now, my hard drive that stores all the videos I've made is going to be completely full. Oh no, I'm the opposite. Somebody calls me an idiot and I just go, yeah, it's probably warranted. <laughs> I, let, I let people have their victories wherever they are. On the conversation of language you just had 10 minutes ago, and somebody was sitting through it, will go, God damn it, no, you're smart, what the hell? Amazing. Listen, like I said, I'm a, I'm a defeatist a little bit. I will let people have their victories. I will let people have their victories because I don't care enough to have mine. Daisy. Oh, it's down here. I'm so used to saying the ring con in the, in my chair here that I thought it was. I didn't see it on the ground. You know we haven't done yoga for a bit. Let's do the yoga. Hmm. Delicious. 
chicken noodle soup. But yeah, as I said, you know, I had my victory for this week, my work ethic, because I got done a side project that didn't need to be done for probably another year and a half now. But I did it now just to get it done with. <laughs> I fall over. Oh god. Okay, let's switch sides. Oh, that was rough. I'm just reading up towards the top of the uh, text, uh, chat box here, by the way. The main reason why I would like to learn Japanese and get a better grasp on Spanish is, well, for Spanish at least, I've, no I've noticed that a lot more people, like, I noticed this, like, after graduate high school, and I've been wanting to look, keep my Spanish learning up, but I never did. That, like, a lot of people are moving up from the south, and because of that, you know, from southern places come people who are more fluent in Spanish than anything else. So I would like to learn the language so I can bridge gaps and help communicate things better with them. For Japanese, I think you really only need to look at this screen up here and understand why I would like to learn Japanese. I'm playing a game by a Japanese developer given to us by a Japanese publisher that had to be translated into English. And if you look around the room behind me, most part, I partake in products that are mostly from Japanese developers. So I would like to kind of take out part the translation work or be part of the translation work for Japanese to English and vice versa. There we go. Uh, no, with the hard drive thing, I try to get more hard drives. I try to store as much as I can locally. With your legs bent slightly, just because in the event, in the event that YouTube goes ass up, for lack of a better term, if YouTube were to ever go ass up, I would like to have those 12 years of footage and documentation and things I've done available to me at the drop of the hat instead of trying to scramble over a day's time to download so much of that stuff. I understand cloud storage is very vital to some people, but I prefer to just have what I need at a moment's notice. And I guess I can't really show it to you too well right now, but like over here, that noise you heard is a USB, uh, hard drive bay 
So I've got the extra storage to put stuff away, but what it is is, for me, is if it has been uploaded to YouTube, I like to hang on to it until I know some people have watched it on YouTube and then I will delete it from my hard drive. The problem with me specifically is I make stuff way too far in advance for a doomsday thing of what if I get sick for an extended period of time or what if I get sick period? What if I lose internet for a month? That's the kind of mentality I have. So I have... Oh god, what is it? I think a 4 and a 10 terabyte hard drive in this hard drive bay. I've got I've got a 1 terabyte solid state drive that's for most of my games and another 250 for my boot drive and all my other games. But then I've got a hard disk drive of 4 terabytes which is where all my Let's Play stuff is stored on. And I keep telling myself I should buy I should buy a USB, I should buy two, like 20 gigabyte or 20 terabyte um, USB, uh, removable USB things, just so I can grandfather and store my stuff a lot better and a lot more reliably. So hey, here's a here's a minor lesson in IT for you today. Perfect. So grandfathering, how I'll explain it is, you have a favorite shirt, like I will say a favorite red polo, for example. I don't I own like three polos, but I know a lot more people wear polo shirts than I do. Okay. So say you have a favorite red polo, Good job. and one day that red polo gets a giant hole, Fantastic. but you can't wear that anymore. But it's still your favorite shirt. So what do you do? You go out and you buy a replacement red polo. That is equivalent to making a backup of something. What grandfathering is, is you have a red polo that's your favorite shirt. You have a backup red polo to take care of that. But say that backup red polo, a bunch of moths eat holes in it and it's no longer wearable. You have a backup for that backup, in case that happens. Well done. That's what grandfathering is. Done. Is to Great. have a backup Wonderful. to your backup, so in case whatever you are Good currently job. storing anything on fails, you have something you can still refer back to in the event of an emergency. Oh. Tough one. Anybody out there who deals with IT, or deals with computer stuff, or stores a lot of stuff, I should do it like this, or does content creation, look into grandfathering your stuff. I need to be more, more, uh, I need to be more persistent on doing that myself, because I've got just one, ba once, uh, one backup hard drive of everything, I would like to have a grandfather of that in case the initial fails. But to come back to the elephant in the room, you got it. I do see the appeal in I do see the appeal of cloud storage because it is storage for all your stuff that you don't have to physically have within your reach. Um. To the, to the effect of that password thing, there are there are a lot of programs that I know of. I, in fact, I have one friend who uses at least two of them. There are many programs out there that will give you a random jumbled amount of letters that will be a password you can copy from their program that will work in, the pa in whatever your password protecting. And I think all you have to do is link up that application or that program to the program that stores all your passwords and then when you go to get that jumbled mess of a password copied over 
the program that what well, other program you give it to, it knows exactly what it is. It's like it's a weird form of encryption. Hi Shitaba. There's a song that I don't know the lyrics to it because it's Japanese, but there is a song out there that just like the the sticking point of that song is just the lyric the vocalist just holds out the just holds out the note. I shiteru. I don't even know what it means in Japanese. I've just heard the song once, and it, every now and again, it flows back into my brain. Like, hey, here's this thing you haven't thought about for six months. Here's this song. By the way, I will say, by the way, I was being non-specific when I mentioned programs that do that. Because A, I'm not sponsored by anything that does that. B, I don't know what programs people would like to use. And see the program that I know of that my friend uses. I think they're starting to go under. So I won't recommend you to a company that I think is starting to go under. Oh. Aishitaba smoothies are really good healer. Or no. No, they're bad healers. What was I looking at? What was I doing? Yeah, that's fine. I figured I wanted to explain myself why I didn't specifically name the program because some people like, what's the name of the program? I'm not gonna give you the name of the program because I don't want you to get, I don't want you to get strung out high and dry in case the the thing in question does go, for lack of a better term, tits up or ass up. Whichever term you like to say, it go it goes bad. But well, I still do want to say, I still still do want to drive home that point that if you have, whew, I still want to drive home that point of if you. If you make content or store a lot of content, even if it's just pictures of something, dang it. Even if it's just pictures of something, uh, it would be beneficial for you to, you did it. to back it up and grandfather back it up. Just so you don't miss lose anything if the worst were to happen. Uh, I don't got it in me. I don't got it in me, man. Not right now, I don't have mountain climbers in me. Okay. Maybe after this. this will work your upper chest. Nice. Fantastic. All right. Amazing. But, Fantastic. the things I tell people, the things I talk about on stream here, it's kind of like an old man, re uh, it's, it's basically like an old man regaling his life to you. This is the best way I can describe it. But I, I talk about the stuff and I share my knowledge of the stuff because I would like people to learn from my mistakes more than anything. Like I have definitely learned the hard way a lot of things in life because I am so stubborn with what I do. And I would love it if people didn't have to repeat my same mistakes. So when I tell tales of what I've done in life, nice. or when I tell you or teach you things about life that you may not have known of, I don't say it to flex my knowledge. I say it to teach people so they don't have to repeat Very the mistakes nice. I've made. That's the only reason why I talk about 
things that nobody would normally know about, like, you know, grandfathering of computer parts. Why you should watch what you buy in a car. I think I've taught that lesson before. Why you should keep yourself fit, like I'm doing right now. Why I tell, why I give all these lessons, and why I say what I say. Hello, slacker. Name Jack. I just say the full name. I tell all these stories because I don't want people to repeat my same, the same mistakes I've made in life. Uh, it go. Uh, we're currently in the final third of my normal ring fit session. So you've joined at a wonderful time, but we're not gonna, we're not stopping the stream after that. I will need like, I will need like five, ten minutes to clean myself up for obvious reasons. Once we're done here. I mean, especially this ring fit thing I do for you guys occasionally. Mostly on Thursdays, but occasionally. You got the, you got the vibe, Jack. You should feel it in your stomach. Um. But yeah, that's like the big reason why I do these ring fit streams is because it's a little bit of. It's a little people, a little bit of people reveling in somebody else's pain, I guess. Reveling in somebody else's pain or efforts to get themselves better. But I do these and I tell stories about myself before I got myself fit. Because I don't want people to spend the first 20 years of their, 20, 25 years of their life like I have, horribly overweight. Jack, thank you for the follow. I don't have anything fun to do for follows other than point a finger and say thank you. So you get that. <sighs> yeah, I don't I don't have I don't have any me to do monster climbers right now. I've already done 120 sets of them. No, 100 170 tonight actually. That's why I do this ring fit thing again. And I'm repeating myself, I'm all aware. But I tell these stories, especially with the ring fit stuff, because I don't want people to make the same mistake I made for the first 25 years of my life. Be 150 to 200 pounds overweight for most of their life, and then fix it when time is too late. an easy fix um i only bring up charles kasai because you know we are we are mutual people in his server but charles actually just went through the effort of replacing his replacing his joy con sticks and also fixing his joy con drift <laughs> this is true okay i'm gonna tell the story a little bit for jack guys i'm gonna paraphrase it but to people who have heard the story before i apologize so jack oh here let me do this quick pause with story time here So, Jack, because we haven't, I, this is our first time speaking. Just so you know, I got hella hard on getting myself fit two, two and a half years ago. What you're seeing now is, the, is my efforts to get myself thin. And this is, about my, this is about my plateau or my bottoming out point before I start looking unhealthy. Just know that I used to weigh May 2018. Was 2018? No, May 2019, when I started working out, I was 360 pounds. I'm currently 240. And I keep working out, especially in front of people, 
to put to put forth the effort of, hey, take care of your body so you don't go through the same crap I did for most of my life. Anyway, that intimate thing aside. It might be because only if you have the drift. That is true. Oh. Alright, this. I don't have I don't have balance by the way, so I have to use a chair for this stuff. Turn into a tree and wait for them to leave. Oh Well, to a, for a certain extent, welcome to the club, brother. You can probably see it at the bottom of the frame there, but I, uh, I'm resting my foot on a chair right now because I have terrible balance. They do give a helpful hint with this stuff that you are able to use. You can use both feet if necessary. I just don't have the balance anymore to rest on one calf or rest on one leg. But anyway, well, Jack, welcome to the stream. Again, appreciate your follow. I do, I do more things than just stream on Twitch. All the links for that stuff is down below. I'm done chilling. <laughs> That's really all it is. I try to keep my self-promotion to a minimum. I wouldn't say I'm a workaholic. Good I know it probably does. There's a lot of things in this game that help, but like, I have terrible balance, and part of it is, actually I don't think I've told this story before, part of it is probably my lack of uh, desire to do it, I, I'm well aware, but half of it is, like, when I was a wee bad, when I was a wee toddler even, uh, when I was a toddler, I was an escape artist. And I mean to the point where, like, if I, like, when I was a, when I was a wee bab, I, I either sprained or broke both my ankles jumping out of, uh, jumping out of my crib to go, to go and open the front door to go to the neighbor's house to see what food they had in their refrigerator. So... Most of my balance issues come from the fact that my ankles aren't are properly formed pro or aren't formed properly for most balance things. Uh, this is true. I do find uh, I do find new ways to make this challenging. Like, as it says right there in the title, this is max difficulty right now. Yes, carrots! The EXP yes. soups are mine! The trophy is mine! Um... Like, um, you can't see them off camera here, and I don't wear them on streams because they tire me out a lot. But, like, difficulty rank 30 here is basically where I'm the most comfortable, and even then, I sometimes go a little bit above and beyond with rank 30 stuff. Because I am so comfortable with this difficulty now. But every now and again, if I'm feeling saucy, every if I'm feeling saucy, I put on these two and a half pound ankle weights. Oh yes, I forgot. I forgot Stewie did that too. It has been so, it is so long since I've seen Family Guy. Um, what I can tell you, Jack, from what I've seen, like, the lightest weighted vest I've seen is about a 15-pound vest at your generic, um, outlet stores. Like, Walmart or Target or something like that. I 
And I will say you do you. I can't stop you from what you're going to do, Jack. For obvious reasons. I'm just trying to make sure you don't make the same mistake I, I almost did in buying one of those 20 pound vests. Because I almost bought a 20 pound vest. But 5 pounds is a lot. <laughs> Especially if you're at a point. <laughs> Especially if you're at a point like I am right now where okay. without any additional oh. weight, don't you're doing fine. But with it. any amount of additional weight, you're struggling. You know, weigh your options. And like I said, I can't stop you. If you're going to go out and buy a 20 pound vest, you're going to go out and buy a 20 pound vest. I'm also not the, the, I'm also not a expert on working out anything. So my word is just my experience. Oh, hell yeah. Martial arts. Get it. I'm saying that as in go get it, not... Not do you get it. I hope you follow me. I will explain. Slowly return to the starting position. Make sure your forward knee does not bend in. Um, Good. Ooh, I can go again. But something, but another thing, Jack, and I show this to, to new viewers a lot who pop in, but I also wear a sauna vest underneath all this, a workout vest, if you will. Do a little bit of that. There you go. So I'm already have like an extra couple pop, a pound or two on me as is working against me. I guess if you're more into old school, older, older school anime, trying to have a thanks, Spring Tom. Trying to have a Goku at the World Tournament moment, where he throws off his weighted gi that weighs like 200 pounds. <laughs> Let's see what I got after that. <sighs> I don't watch a lot of anime. But I do know the big ones, and I do know the big moments and stuff like of those big ones. Just because how can you not with how many people you would know online? Water. Does the body good. Mmm, let me see here. Yeah, we'll be teetering on about the end of this workout session, depending upon how this goes. Also, what is that stuff called? Is that arugula or is that something else? Because I just started getting that. Fennel. Interesting looking. 
I've never seen like actual fennel. I've heard of fennel seeds before, but I've never actually seen fennel, like even a artist rendition of fennel. Anyway, let's right. see how this goes, eh? Yeah, that would make sense. Like a lot of people, I I watch my, a handful of cooking shows and fennel does come up. It's mentioned, but I don't think it's ever like mentioned specifically what for. Don't worry, I have the perfect spread attack for these guys. Also, I should mention, Jack, if you're... I don't know how far you are in this game. Uh, I, myself, this is New Game Plus territory. So, dialogue is much different in this, and the tension is much different in this from a normal, from the first time playing through it. It's just that enemy, enemy stats have been adjusted for new game plus parameters. Figured I'd say that now in case you were uh, <laughs> wondering, wondering what the hell's going on or why I'm such a high level in world effectively three. Or no, this is effectively world four. Because Armando is here. Okay. Perfect. Alright, that's good. Again, I over explain stuff. As I said earlier in the stream, people are well within the right to tell me to shut okay. up because I know I over explain things. say. And forgive me if I'm repeating a lot of stuff that people who have been here before say. I may say it's for Jack. Um, so you guys can hear the game perfectly fine and well. Me not so much, but that's because I'm not going to wear headphones while I'm doing this because I don't want to sweat up my only good pair of headphones. So like I can hear various murmurs of the game through my headset right now to my right. With you guys, it's like normal. Good job. Nothing is different for you guys. You can hear things clear as bell. Clear as a bell. Try those. Try those words, Scooter. No. bad as some other people I mean I'm kind of crazy when it comes to this game because this is like it's oversharing a little bit I mean I'm up in Wisconsin it only just recently got warm enough to go outside but that's still in the middle of the day so this is really my only way to work out <laughs> until we get like a, a, a month down the road or so
There we go. heard that. That was my neck popping. I don't have to jump on that one. They put that there. Okay. Let's collect the skills. Uh, yeah, I typically play this in the evening just because that's when I have time to do it. Because right now it's a weird time, I'm laid off from work due to lack of work. But whenever I do play this, I either play it when I feel ready to do it, which usually means like three hours after I work up, work up, wake up, or at the end of my work day every other day. Replacing the elliptical for the one I broke, I broke down on me last year, Excellent. and I did so actually last week or two weeks ago now I think. Only to have to turn around, go and take it right back to the store I got it from, because for one of the parts, there was like there's a rod connecting the two uh, levers that you push with your hands to help move you along. That rod. One of the bolt threads in it was about two feet deep in the rod, welded in place, instead of close to the end of the rod. So, but, I do still want to, at one point, try and get back to using my an elliptical for, for some days, for working out, Be just because Just because I, it would change up my uh, workout routine. Like I thought, oh, this is just, it's just uh, back down there weird. I'll just deal with the fact that the rod may be sliding around. I'll just pull the uh, threading back out with a, with a really long needle nose players I had. Just pull it back out to where it should be and deal with it on my own time. No, it was welded. Like, actually a perfect example. Let me, let me do a little digging here. Give me one second. Never leave home without your Norwegian yardstick. Anyway, so the bar was, you know, closer to like this, this long instead of the whole length of this, but I'm using this as an example. So one side of the threading was right here at the end of it where it should be. The other end was like here. And the screws for it were about that long. It's right here. Anyway, do some more leg races here. But yeah, I took it back to the store and I said, hey, here's the issue. And I 
shown it to them in the cart. I took some of the some of the equipment apart, but not all the way apart. But I was like, hey, here's the issue, and I turned I turned it so they could look inside the pipe. I was like, oh yeah, you can't use that. We'll we'll refund you, no questions. and I would do jogging more as well nice. but unfortunately Wonderful. most of the time when I go out and do jogging you know in the morning Fantastic. and in the evening it's a crisp 35 degrees and I'm not gonna deal with the cold All right. Nicely done. I know some people like jogging in the cold me okay. not so much like I need I like to have it at least be like 45 50 degrees so I don't freeze yeah. wearing a sweatshirt yeah. and sweatpants I do enjoy, when I had an elliptical, I do enjoy using it, because even when it what feels like a walking speed for me, it's about perfect pace for me. Elliptical, stair step, or they're about the same thing. At least from what I know. I think that's the term. I'm re-familiarizing myself with the climate around me because over the course of a year, I lost over 100 pounds. And I, for, and I realized the fact afterward that when you weigh 100, 100 plus pounds less, you don't have a lot of insulation against the cold, even if muscle is calculated. So contrary to how I was three years ago, I get cold very easily now. Like, Good job. Sure. Uh, for most for most winters, I would wear a sweater, and that would be my winter coat. I wouldn't care. Now this winter, I would wear I wore I wore a sweater and a winter coat, and even debated about wearing a long sleeve shirt some days. I always find it funny telling that story to much of my own chagrin. Okay. Just because you don't realize how insulated body fat keeps you until you don't have it. Keep it up. Fine work. You got it. Keep it up. Five more. Come on. Well done. Three. All right. Like, muscle helps to an extent, but it takes a lot less muscle to equal out the same fat content as body fat. Which is, legs bend slightly, which is why, you know, people say muscle weighs, muscle weighs more than fat, which is true. But if somebody is swole as hell, they will weigh 300 pounds, but goddamn are they ripped. And they are healthy because they're that ripped. Okay, me? Let's move. But for me, like, some of my weight, some of my weight over my recommended for my body, for my height, which, by the way, I haven't been able to go to a doctor to confirm if I'm healthy or not in this regard of what my body weight. But, um, like, I'm 6'2", so my recommended body weight without genetics or anything like that factored in is 205 pounds. Now, genetics-wise, no male in my family 
has ever weighed less than 230 pounds. Including my father who used to work construction and pick up two 300 pound I-beams by himself. So I say with minimal muscle that I do have, about 220 is probably my bottom end number that I want to be. And that's like with almost no muscle tone. And like I said before, I'm currently 240. Part of it is I probably have about five tens of body fat on me. Part of it is I probably have about five, 10 pounds of loose skin on me from all the weight I lost. And any, any, uh, any in between is muscle mass that I've gained doing ring fit and running on an elliptical and things of that sort. So yes, by all, I consider myself, I consider myself overweight, but for most, for, for a lot of reasons that are out of my control. And there we go. Drop your this is probably the last thing we're doing for this for Ring Fit today. Because we're at an hour. Now I know this I know this run wasn't very energetic. So I'd be surprised if I get if I get anywhere close to 120 beats. Whew. But hey, I'm in the groove. I'm feeling it. I'll do that one for my warm up next time I play, which will probably be on Thursday. Yes, Kasai. Speed run time soon. As in, as soon as I get done with the with the uh, cool down stretching. Perfect. That's about that's where, that's about where I aim for, or a little bit more for that calories burned every, every time I work out. That's the time has finally come. Oh God. But yeah, the speed run will happen soon, Kasai. Um, I need to do my rep. Ten thousand, really? I realize I love that exercise, but holy cow, really? Um, I need to do the cooldown stretches. I need to do the cooldown stretches, and I also need to Let's clean up all the sweat off my person. That'll take about 10-15 minutes. Be mindful of your body and stretch within the range of your ability. Use your right hand to pull back the fingers of your left hand. So there will be an in-between time here where I'll be, uh, back your left wrist, where your I'll be putting forward. on, a. Just some OC remix tracks while I go clean up. Now do the same on the but when I get side. back, but when I get back, we'll do Sonic R speed run, and then after that's done, we'll you'll heel turn into Age of Calamity, Pyro Warriors Age of Calamity, I should say specifically. So there'll be a few moments here while slowly. I. Oh, per, uh, personal trainer? Hell yeah. Stretch your upper arms while pulling your a lot of people on stream down. try and tell a lot of people on stream tell me because I go on these uh I go on these tirades about how I've corrected my body and how I do how I've corrected my own weight issues. Now do the same on a lot of times people have told me, you know, I should be a personal trainer, but <laughs> with my lack of stamina and my lack of drive some days, I don't think I should be a personal trainer. That's just me being re real with myself. Because, yeah, I can give those motivational Bring speeches to make yourself slowly. better. To actually show Join it, your hands like you see me here, you. I've taken many long breaks because I get exhausted. Out. Stretch out your back. But, but this is not about me. This is about you, man. I really hope that you do get your certification so you can be a personal trainer. Because you seem like the kind Bring of guy that back. really enjoys doing that kind of stuff. Put your right oh, Nefshi. And put your hands on your hips. Hope your day is sweet with devil right chocolate cake with cooked dill ice cream with a cherry on top of the Boston donut and cream pies and with an Oreo milkshake. Oh god, that's decadent. That sounds like 
That sounds like a meal that you have it and then you don't eat anything again for the next three days. <laughs> Good lord. Although it does sound delicious. But thank you, Nepshi. Bring yourself back slowly. Widen your stance, place your hands on your knees, oh. and drop your hips. Rotate your left shoulder inward and extend so. your left hip joint. Whew. Well, Return I do thank you all for coming along for this uh, ring fit session here. Now stretch your right um, hip joint. If you're first time, if you're first time visitors, I do ring fit mostly on Thursdays. Be sure. So if you're just here for ring fit, tune in Thursdays in the evening. Bring yourself back slowly. <sighs> and your stretching is complete. Good job. Yeah, we don't have too much sodium because it gives because sodium is part of salt, and too much salt dries you out. And if you dry out too much, you pass out easier. Drink water. All right. So let me write myself down a note here. Let me disassemble a little bit. Let me write, write myself down a note. Let's see. Two, two, and we'll say 218. So I'm gonna take a minute here to go clean up. But when I come back from that, I'll be booting up this lovely game to play Sonic R to do my speed run, do my speed run of it, also to practice my speed run for the stacked game marathon coming up at the end of this month. Uh, for those of you that do not know what that is, the stacked game marathon is going to be a charity marathon hosted by Odin's back. That's really, that's really a lot I can give. I should have added a command or at least a tab tablet down there below me to talk more about it, but that's my only shortcoming. 